Hello, my friends and colleagues, it is Mike coming at you from Seattle. And if you're like me, you see a lot of folks in your practice recovering from whiplash and whiplash-associated disorder. And the question I always have is, why is it so hard to treat? Why does it seem so persistent in its symptoms? Most folks who experience a whiplash injury, whether it's in a vehicle or in sport or in some other domain of life, first encounter a model of whiplash that is essentially a sprain strain injury. Uh, that is to say, you are in some acceleration, deceleration, and the dense connective tissues in your neck and head uh, are overwhelmed. And what you have to do to recover is to heal those damaged tissues. Now that is certainly the case, but why then does whiplash not behave like a lot of other sprain strain injuries? Why is it that six weeks down the line, three months down the line, six months down the line, even a year down the line, people experience significant alteration to their quality of life, significant symptoms subsequent to a whiplash injury? Um, even when the injury itself wasn't even that high velocity, people can experience con considerable discomfort and uh, symptoms even when they were in a low velocity event. So if you think about the moment of a whiplash injury, it's helpful to think in two broad categories. Number one, an overwhelming mechanical stress to the physical tissues. Number two, an overwhelming stimulus to the nervous system. And all of the persistent symptoms that we see in whiplash can be explained by the interaction of that mechanical healing process and that nervous system re-regulation. So let's dive into what we see in folks who are suffering from whiplash and whiplash associated disorder. Number one, let's talk about the primary tissue injuries. In the moment that a person is experiencing an acceleration, deceleration injury, they can experience strain to their myofascia. They can experience sprain to their ligaments, facet joints, and discs. They can experience visceral strains and bruising, uh, often not talked about, but the upper lungs can experience mechanical strain. Uh, the organs that are solid in the lower thorax, like the liver and spleen, can experience uh, bruising from a seat belt, uh, which can later alter breathing patterns, etc. The throat and vocal column can experience strain, which results in changes to vocalization and swallowing. Uh, you can certainly experience nerve injuries, and those fall on a broad spectrum, uh, from very mild to very debilitating. Nerves exiting the neck and, uh, and descending. You can also experience mechanical stress to the brain itself, the tissue of the brain, and that falls into concussion. Again, a spectrum from mild to severe injury to the brain. But shouldn't these primary tissue injuries just heal on some reasonable timeline? Well, the reason they sometimes don't is because of feedback loops. Because some output of a primary tissue injury is driving other phenomena that cause the disorder to persist. And that's how we have to think about it, and that's where we can put our energy as clinicians is in trying to lessen those feedback loops, to take energy out of the storm, as it were. One of those feedback loops has to do with altered perception of movement and space. In addition to being structural elements, the dense connective tissues of the neck and head are sensory organs. They are proprioceptive organs. And so your ability to point your head in a direction, your ability to sense where the ground is, to coordinate movement, to make sense of a complex physical environment, all of that depends on an intact flow of sensory information from the connective tissues 
of your neck and head. And if those are damaged, you also have an altered perception, perhaps, of your physical environment, which can be dysregulating. You will also often see folks with whiplash injury who have acquired some movement patterns that feed back on tissue inflammation and threat perception. There's something in the strategy of movement that they have acquired that irritates tissues further or that uh, drives a perception of vigilance and threat. Speaking of threat perception, a huge piece of whiplash is trauma. An overwhelming stimulus to the nervous system which leaves debilitating persistent effects. So everything you will see in a trauma response, uh, you will see commonly in whiplash disorder. You will see protective and avoidant behaviors, um, such as hypervigilance, hyperreflexia, dystonia, dissociative spectrum, everything from feeling a little bit spacey to full-blown depersonalization. You will see increased perception of pain in folks with whiplash disorder. Um, you will see dysautonomia, dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. Uh, that means altered breathing pattern, altered muscle tone at a systemic level. You will see inflammatory dysregulation systemically and locally. Uh, and you will see sleep disturbance. You will also see significant mood alteration in someone suffering from whiplash uh, and whiplash associated disorder. Folks will have real challenges with their mood, with their affect, uh, and this is a big barrier to further recovery. This can really accentuate their suffering. Finally, as they move through their lives, you're gonna see behavioral impacts that themselves lengthen the recovery period. You'll see impact on how someone drives, how someone sleeps, how they read, how they navigate space, how they engage in social situations or don't, and how they engage in habituated inertia, how they despair over the immovable obstacle of their own health. And that is why it's challenging to treat, because we as practitioners have to think across systems, we have to think across time scales. So now is where it helps to think like an ecologist. It helps to focus on the interfaces between body systems. So instead of just focusing on segmental stability or muscular trigger points or neural tension, focus on the places where those systems interface. The innervation of vertebral segments by nerves the contextualized movement of nerves and muscles. Also useful as an ecologist of the body is to think about collaborating with the system you're trying to help. Learn from it in context. So as much as you can, have someone reenact or recreate real life situations that are meaningful to them, and then observe how they navigate those situations. How does the neck move and engage? How does perception flow in those real life meaningful contexts? This will help you boil down the impossible complexity here into targets for your care, tissues that need some contact, perceptual processes that could use some re-regulation, inflammatory behavior that could use some soothing. It is when we focus on feedback loops and tissue interfaces, when we focus on processes instead of uh, immovable problems, that we have the best chance of helping someone with whiplash make stepwise recovery and hopefully shortening the time that they have to suffer. Thank you for watching. In a future video, we will focus on some real life examples of how to collaborate with the system in context. And if you're interested in learning more, I teach a class on whiplash treatment, which is online and open to any healthcare practitioner. Have a great day.